Okay, today we're going to have a look at the PFLOW P118i ultrasonic flow meter. Okay, so you'll see it comes in the hard case. We'll run through the inclusions, so you'll get a copy of a manual, calibration cert, the meter itself, transducers and cables. Um, we'd usually chuck in an extra tube of couplant, get your transducer frames, a uh, tape measure, that's the word. In this particular case, this is a high temperature flow meter, so this one has some high temp coupling as well. Underneath, we have an SD card reader. Again, in this particular case, it's a high temp version. The mounting uh, option is also having uh, these chains. Okay, so this is for manually mounting with chains onto a non magnetic pipe charger some more mounting options this is just um, straps uh, and then a junction box this is for your 4 to 20 milliamp output and we'll just run through the meter itself okay now there's a couple advantages of the p118 uh, over the p117 so that'll be that this uh, is a better technology it's pico fly technology which offers uh, increased accuracy so it'll be 0.5 percent uh, accuracy rather than the 1% um, of the P117. It can work with higher velocities, so that's up to 12 meters per second velocities uh, on this model. Uh, it has better repeatability at 0.15%. It can work on larger pipes, so this will work on pipes from DN15 to 6000, uh, and also it's color rather than just black and white on the display. Okay, so booting it up, um, behind this cover here, there's the switch, the power switch, uh, and also that's where all your connections go in. So charging, your transducers, um, the SD card for your logging, everything's up here behind this cover. So now we'll just run through a typical installation. Uh, we're gonna go onto this carbon steel pipe here. So, um, getting through menus, um, you can use the up and down button. So that's these in the bottom right. So using these will go up and down menus if you're in a menu. Um, you can also use these shortcut sort of buttons um, on the display as well. So uh, if I press rate, that'll display the flow rate, velocity will show velocity, signal, total, graph, and so on. Okay, for our actual setup, um, the first menu that we'll need is menu 11, or also known as the outer diameter. So OD is what we need to press, or you can also press menu and then type in the window, which is 11. Both will get to the same place, and you'll see now that we're in menus, we can go up and down via these buttons. So the first one we want is the OD, okay, and in this case, we've got a 90 mil pipe. So to enter that, I just press enter, and you'll see now this is a waiting input, and I'll type in my 90, and then enter again. Okay, so that's set for a 90 millimeter outer diameter pipe. Next one we need is menu 12. It's pipe wall thickness. Or you can also press the PWT button. Uh, and in this case, it's 4.9. So again, I just press enter, type it in, 4.9. Go down a menu. Okay, you'll see the pipe inner diameter is calculated from the previous two that I've put in already. So with a outer diameter and wall thickness it already knows um, the inner diameter or you know you might know that and you just need two of the three okay but you don't need that part material just press enter you can scroll through a list okay and in if you don't know uh, if your material isn't one of those listed here it's just select other and then you'll see the next menu will unlock where you can input the sound velocity of your pipe material. Um, so you just press enter and manually enter that in. So there's some other uh, materials in the manual, which you can you can check that in the manual, or maybe with a, with a web search, you might find your particular material uh, and then manually enter the sound velocity. Um, but in this case, we're just gonna select here carbon steel if you have a liner, again, it's just the same process. Just enter your liner material here. In this case, we don't have one, so I'll select none. 
uh, your fluid. Again, this is just by a selectable list. In this case, I do have water, but um, you can just press enter, scroll through a list of some common fluids. And again, if your fluid isn't listed here, you can select other. And then the next menu, you can manually enter the sound velocity of your liquid. Um, but in this case, I'm just gonna select water. Transducer type. Um, this will pretty much always be standard. No need to change that for, for most applications. Transducer mounting. Okay, now your mounting most common is, is V. That's what's used typically. Um, but there are different mounting methods in a V. Um, basically, your signal will bounce from one transducer off the back of the pipe and into your transducer again. Um, but there are other mounting methods like Z where it doesn't bounce and you'd have your transducers on opposite sides of the pipe. So you'd have one here and one on the back. Uh, but in this demo, we're just going to use the common V. So we need to change that. And finally, uh, on my new 25, it'll say how far um, the spacing is that you need to set your transducers apart. Okay, so what that is, we've got 60.51. So that basically means from the face of the transducers, we need to have 60.51 mil from one face to the other. Okay, and that's pretty much all that we'll need in terms of setup. Um, so now what we're gonna do is just install the transducers at that distance. You'll see on the frames themselves, they've got a little measuring, um, measuring sort of thing here on the side. Uh, and we're just going to mount these frames onto the pipe. And you'll see these frames, um, they also have an upstream, and uh, it'll show the flow direction. So in this particular case, we have a pump coming through here. This is our flow direction. So I'm just going to stick the frame onto the pipe. You'll see these are magnetic. Okay. I'm going to stick that one there. So it's a good idea to have, um, if you've got a metal pipe with some rust on it or paint, um, just sand it down so it's nice bare metal. And again, I'm just gonna take this frame now. I'm just gonna pop it directly next to it. So they're just side by side. Okay, and now in this particular model, this is a high temp model. Um, so these frames may be different um, depending on what model you buy or variant of this model that you buy um, but the premise is pretty much the same between all of them it's just mounting the transducers um, in this case this is a magnetic mount and then the transducers aren't magnetic so you can slide these into the frame essentially what we're going to do is slide them into the frame we need to put some coupling on the back of the transducer and then we're just going to tighten this frame down in place and then just checking the distance between them um, we'll have another transducer in here, obviously, and then tighten it all down. But what we need to do first is check which one is upstream and what is downstream. Okay, so on these, let's see if I can get it to focus. Sorry, on these little labels, you see this says transducer upstream, so red is going to be upstream. And what we just need to do Take your transducer, grab some couplet, and we just need to basically put a a blob of, of couplet here on the on the transducer, and then we're just going to slide it into the frame. Let's just make sure this is unscrewed. Slide this into position and we're just going to tighten this down but what we also want to do is say let's go for three centimeters on this side and then we can base the other side um, off that distance and you'll see I'm just tightening this frame down um, and that just tightens this transducer down onto the pipe uh, that's probably actually a little too tight it's lifting the frame just make it snug okay and we'll do the same over here on this other transducer so I'm just going to grab some couplant put a nice blob on it okay and we needed what was it 
60.5 so we've got three centimeters that's to the face of the transducer and I'm just going to do the same on this one Okay, slide this into position. And we need the transducer at about three. And we're just tightening it down. So the total distance there is 60 mil. 60 and a half is what we actually need. And you'll see those little bits tighten down onto the transducer and just make everything nice, tight and snug. Okay, so that's our transducers mounted up. Okay, and we're at the correct spacing of around 60 mil. There's something else to note uh, that, that could be important uh, is if you're on a larger pipe, okay, obviously this distance uh, may not cover you for the whole thing. So that's where your tape measure will come in. You just uh, mount your one transducer frame, okay? Then you'd need to manually measure the distance with your tape measure from the front face of your transducer onto, say you had a big pipe and you needed to space them at 200 mil apart. Um, then you just mount your frame, you know, separated and manually measure your distance with your tape measure just to get that correct spacing. Okay, now, so we're about ready to connect our transducer cables. Okay, so we just need to connect these in the upstream and downstream ports uh, on the flow meter. So in this case, I've got my upstream. You'll see uh, there's a little red dot uh, on the face of that. That just needs to go in towards you. So I'm just going to open up this cover again. Stick this red one in the upstream port. Okay, upstream and the blue one in the downstream port. Okay, they're ready to go. And if we had some flow, we should start to see that here uh, on, on just the rate button. One other thing I wanna change is my units. Okay, so at the moment I've got uh, M3H. If I go to menu 31, I can change this and you can change that to, to various. I'm just going to go with liters and then I'm going to make it a minute. To announce it to liters a minute and I'll see that up here on my rate screen. So now if I turn on the pump okay we need to check a couple values of importance and um, so one of them being the signal. Okay so this um, these values are, are just signal values of the transducers. So all of these you basically want to have over a value of 60. Higher is better, um, and perhaps if your signal is low you might need more couplant, or maybe your transducers are incorrectly mounted, or, or something like that. Um, in this case, it's good. And at 97, that's over 60, I'm happy with that. Um, and then one other value we want to look at is um, on menu 91. Okay, that's this uh, percentage value. So this you want within 3% of 100. So it can be in the range of 97 to 103. We're at 101, so I'm happy with that. And usually if that's out of spec, it'll be that either parameter is wrong, um, maybe your wall thickness you've entered it correctly or something like that. And it's, it's basically telling you a ratio. Um, so maybe your, your transducers are in the wrong position or something like that. Okay, I'll just make sure everything's tight. And now we're ready to measure. So if we go on to rate, that will show our actual flow rate. Okay, that's our, the current flow rate going through this pipe. Um, and um, you can also look at your totals. Okay, so negative total, we've had, we've had no negative reading. Net, we've had um, 0.36 cubic meters. And, and then that's just showing you positive. So net is obviously your, your negative, take your positive, and we've only had positive, so it's the same as, as the positive. And, and that's about it. It's now measuring and, and ready to go. Okay, another thing that might be of interest is the data logging. Um, so on this model, it, it has onboard data logging, and to use it, you just press data. Okay, choose how long of a time 
uh, you want it to run for, say you wanted it for two hours, you set it to, to 120 minutes, maybe we just want to log for one hour, so I type in 60 minutes, and our interval can go as low as one second, so I'll use that. Okay, and when you're ready to start logging, just hit start. Okay, and we're gonna start, uh, this is logging now, and this is just gonna continue to run for the next hour, and then when it's finished, um, this will change to start. Okay, so that's just me manually ending it. Um, but that's where you know it's, it's now ended. You get this little graph um, to show you the process of how things went. Uh, and then obviously that's just logged uh, onto that SD card, um, which you can then take that SD card, grab the SD card reader that's included, uh, plug into your PC, and you'd have a file um, that you can now see all those those logs uh, that you've saved. Um, and I think that's about it to show you. Um, yeah, if you have any questions, let us know. It's available on our website, uh, which is www.zflow.com.au, uh, or send us an email. It'll be sales at zflow.com.au. Thank you. Bye.